Hi everyone, and welcome back to The Shack. Well, grab yourselves a cup of cocoa or a mulled wine and let's ease ourselves into the festive season with something that I've been wanting to get my hands on for a long time, and I'm keen to see what all the fuss is about. But first, a little poem. <coughs> Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. All the TVs were dark with nary a glow and the tree in the corner adorned with fake snow. The children were sleeping, their minds full of glee, tired out from watching Die Hard 1, 2 and 3. Mrs. Retro Shack's PJs a sight to behold, and I in a blanket to keep out the cold. When all of a sudden there came such a din, it sounded like someone had kicked over our bins. So we ran to the window as fast as we could, and had a good nose round the neighbourhood. The stars twinkled lightly and the moon was aglow. The street light revealed some slushy grey snow. When what did our bleary and beery eyes see but a fake looking sleigh being towed by an X3. And sat in the back with a sack full of tat was the man from the garage who sells petrol and that. More rapid than eagles his Christmas cheer sang till his sleigh hit next door's car with a bang. Oh bother, oh dash it, oh nonsense and fuss. I don't have insurance for that, Santa cussed. To the end of the road, turn right at the shops, quick before somebody calls in the cops. As leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. That X3 was off, hurtling into the night, towing Santa, his sleigh and his sack out of sight. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof, the sound of what I could swear was a hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around in the fireplace, this bloke in a costume I found. So shocked was I, I found nothing to say, but I knew that this chap was from PCB Way. The logo was plastered all over his clothes, 3D printed glasses were perched on his nose. Tight round his shoulders, a PCB Way scarf, and a cheeky little grin split his face near in half. His sack contained boards of every dimension, cartridges, main boards, too many to mention. He placed goodies galore right under my tree. What a sponsor, I thought, real quality. A fancy tea towel was last on the pile. Mrs. Retro Shack will grab that, I thought, with a smile. He filled all the stockings with goodies galore. I really couldn't have asked for very much more. Then laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. As he went who knows where in his travels that night, I assume other YouTubers were visited, right? And in leaving, he made this on-point exclamation. Use PCB Way for your custom fabrication. Merry Christmas and thanks to PCB Way. In our retro-loving world, where nostalgia collides with innovation, resides the curious tale of the Mr. FPGA project. Born from a yearning for retro authenticity and fueled by the ingenuity of tech enthusiasts, Mr. aspires to breathe life back into the dormant spirits of classic computers and forgotten consoles. Back in our youth, where joysticks were wands of wonder, games were portals to other worlds, and software tools sparked our creativity. Yet, as time marched on, technology evolved, leaving many beloved machines gathering dust in the forgotten corners of history. Well, that's where Mr. Steps in, wielding the might of modern tech like a sorcerer's apprentice. Its heart, the Terrasic DE10 Nano board, becomes a canvas of reconfigurable logic, shaping itself into the silicon ghosts of bygone machines. Through the magic of FPGAs, these chips of malleable circuitry morph into Amigas, Segas and Commodores, faithfully replicating their every circuit and pulse. 
More than just replicating the past, Mr. Whispers promises of the future. Its open source nature invites hackers and tinkerers to delve into the very fabric of these digital dreamscapes. New cores emerge, breathing life into the obscure arcade cabinets and forgotten prototypes. Custom software paints new worlds onto the old canvas, pushing the boundaries of retro possibilities. So whether you're a seasoned adventurer yearning for a return to pixelated landscapes or a tech-savvy explorer drawn to the frontiers of digital archaeology, Mr. Beckons. For this build, we'll need this 7-port USB hub with its 7 USB 2 Type-A ports to connect a plethora of devices simultaneously, including wired and wireless controllers, keyboards, mice, Wi-Fi adapters and external storage drives. The Mr. Analog Board add-on extends the DE10 Nano's HDMI output and gives you the additional option for VGA and RGB output for classic CRT monitors. It also boasts an analog jack, a secondary microSD slot and controls to tweak fan performance and ambiance and some control buttons. We've got this real-time clock module, which it won't surprise you to discover, provides a battery-backed real-time clock for the mister so that your save games get a nice timestamp. Then there's this little, I'm going to call it Ujima flip, which is used to connect the micro USB connector on the DE10 to the connector on the USB hub. Next up is this 128 meg RAM module. You can run the mister with less RAM or more RAM than this, but 128 meg appears to be the sweet spot at the moment, as not much requires more than that in the current lineup of available cores. We've got our Bluetooth dingle dongle for Bluetoothy goodness, and we've got our Wi Fi dingle dongle so we don't have to rely on that old fashioned network cabling malarkey. And apart from the acrylic case and the massive standoffs required to hold it all together, we've got this 8 bit dough USB controller that looks nice and retro, but you've got all the buttons that you get on a PlayStation or Xbox controller, so should be fine for any game we throw at it. We'll need this HDMI cable, this power splitter, and of course a UK power supply. So now while you struggle with the pain of watching me struggle with my own stupidity putting this thing together, let's talk about what separates the Mr. FPGA project from, say, a Raspberry Pi running software emulators. OK, so let's imagine a dedicated hobbyist, we'll call them Alex, who swears by the Mr. FPGA project. Alex is a purist, seeking an experience as close to the original as possible. The heart of Alex's setup is the FPGA, a marvel of technology that doesn't just emulate, but replicates the very circuits of classic consoles and computers. The Mr. FPGA, with its modular design, allows Alex to add various components, enhancing performance and expanding capabilities. Each core Alex loads is a testament to the community's dedication, meticulously crafted to recreate a specific system. For Alex, the joy lies in the authenticity, the feeling that each game is played just as it was decades ago, despite the technical complexity and higher cost of this setup. Then there's Sam, who prefers the accessibility and versatility of the RetroPie project on a Raspberry Pi. Sam's Raspberry Pi, a compact and affordable computer, is transformed into a gateway to nostalgia. Unlike Alex's FPGA setup, Sam's Raspberry Pi is not just for gaming, it's a multi-purpose device that can handle various tasks. With RetroPie, Sam enjoys a user-friendly interface, easy setup and a vast library of games across multiple systems. Sure, the software emulation isn't as hardware accurate as Alex's FPGA, but Sam loves the convenience and the fact that it's more budget friendly. For Sam, RetroPie is a perfect blend of nostalgia and modern convenience, ideal for reliving childhood memories without breaking the bank or delving too deeply into technical details. Alex and Sam might debate the merits of their chosen platforms. Alex champions the unparalleled accuracy and performance of the Mr. FPGA, while Sam advocates for the ease of use and flexibility of RetroPie. Both, however, share a common passion, a love for retro gaming and a desire to preserve its legacy. 
In their unique ways, the Mr. FPGA project and the RetroPie project embody the spirit of retro gaming, whether it's the pursuit of perfect replication with the Mr. or the accessible all-in-one gaming experience of RetroPie. Both projects keep the joy and nostalgia of classic gaming alive for enthusiasts like our imaginary Alex and Sam, and of course, you and me. When putting together this Mr. FPGA setup, I've noted that it's quite important which bits go where and when. I'm sure this is written down somewhere, but it's also been quite a learning experience. The key elements have been make sure the real-time clock is fitted to the DE10 nano board before you do anything else. Make sure that when you fit the RAM module, it's facing the right way. When fitting the connector that joins the DE10 nano to the USB hub, Plug the micro USB connector into the D10 first and then lower the whole lot onto the USB hub. Oh, and always check you're using the right standoffs with a test fit before screwing them all in. It's pretty straightforward though, and as long as you take your time, you should be good to go. Okay, it's time to cable up and see if this thing works. If, like me, you've got a pre-installed SD card with your mister, it's simply a matter of making sure it's inserted in the SD card slot on the DE10 Nano, not the one on the analog add-on board. If you're starting from scratch and need to set up your own SD card image, follow the very simple instructions on the Mr. Bible website. There's a link in the description. Even I could do it. You'll note that I'm using the HDMI output from the Nano rather than the VGA output, and that's so I can capture the output cleanly into OBS. And also because I have an episode coming up on CRTs and want to dive into more detail then. That seven port USB hub soon gets filled up with the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, keyboard, mouse, and joypad. And to be honest, it's all a bit too messy for my liking. So I'm gonna have to do some cable management on this at some point. Okay, let's flip the switch and see what happens. Well, it's booted up, and whether you're using a pre-built card like me, or you've just built your own, you're gonna to want to head to the scripts directory and run the Wi-Fi script to set your Wi-Fi up. When that's all connected, you then need to run the update all script, which is a very handy little script that does exactly what it says on the tin. It goes off and updates all of the available cores for the Vista to their latest versions. It'll also download a bunch of games and stuff for you to muck about with. First time running this can take a while, but if you get into the habit of running it once a week or so, you'll keep your mister all nice and up to date. So now it's all plugged in, working and updated, what does it actually do? Well, my primary purpose for wanting one of these is so that I've got easy access to hardware accurate versions of most of the systems I own at the push of a button without all the fuss that comes with having to take a system out of storage, set it all up, use it for a bit, and then having to do it all again for another system. With the Mister, I can swap between machines as quickly as I like, and unless I'm actually doing something with physical hardware, such as a cartridge or other add-on, this will do just fine. Whether it's popping into a spectrum to hear a beep, or configuring a QL with 640K of memory and wondering at the possibilities. I'll finally get to play on a Sam Coupe, another unicorn from my youth that I've never managed to get my hands on. And because the Mister replicates all of the hardware in a machine, it means you get accurate sound from Mr. Oric. Each of the cores has its own internal configuration settings for cartridges, tapes, hardware revisions, and frankly, it's a bit overwhelming. From MSX to Apple Mac, from Dragon 32 to Commodore 64, the ability to switch between cores almost instantly is quite simply amazing. The Mister comes complete with an SSH layer, so you don't even have to take the SD card out to add more games. You can connect over FTP and just drop the games into the relevant systems games directory, as long as you legally own them, of course. There's not enough time in this video to go through each of the cores, their setup and configuration options, but there's a ton of info out there on Tinternet. And if you're interested in a specific system, drop a note in the comments. And if there's enough interest, I may well do follow-up videos going into more details on those systems. 
but it's not just retro computers that the Mister can replicate. There are a ton of arcade machines that have had their delicate aging PCBs translated into FPGAEs, and again, they're identical to the originals. And then, even if that wasn't enough, most of the consoles up to the PlayStation 1 stroke Sega Saturn era have also been replicated. In all of the time I've put into the machine before finally getting around to filming it, the cores I've used have been very accurate. There's the odd glitch still to iron out in some machines. For example, if someone out there can fix the mixed mode BBC micro issues, that would be great because, well, elite. I hope this video has given you an insight into the Mr. Project and just how easy it is to build, set up and use. Maybe, like me, you were always under the impression that it was much more difficult than it is. And if so, fear no more, it's easy. Anyway, Christmas is looming and even if the man in the red suit or that chap on the cross isn't your thing, we hope you all have a fantastic festive season or at least a bit of a break from work. Lots of great stuff in the pipeline for next year and we hope you'll come along for the ride. Don't forget that memberships are now live on the channel if you enjoy what we do and want to support this kind of nonsense. We're so nearly at 30,000 subscribers, which would be a great target to hit by the end of the year. So if you do watch regularly and don't subscribe, be a sweetie and push the button. Right, happy eating and drinking and see you next time in the Retro Shack.